The MSI GeForce RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio is the top-of-the-line MSI variant of the RTX 2070 Super graphics card, sporting a 3-fan cooling system, a metallic backplate, and a hefty price tag of 515 US dollars, which when we look at the big picture is only a 15 US dollars increase over the 499 US dollars MSRP of the reference RTX 2070 Super graphics card. The RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio has a design that uses a neutral color combination of two shades of grey. This design is present in its general form and shape on all RTX Gaming X graphics cards from MSI. The fan shroud itself has multiple layers which not only include RGB elements but also create a raised frame for each of the three frozer fans. The fans used on this graphics card are different in size but share the same design of the impellers and the rotor. These fans are made by PowerLogic and have the model number PLD110S12HH for the 295mm fans and PLD092-10S12HH for the smaller 85mm fan. The usage of different fans in size in this particular case is not to improve the cooling performance, but to allow the access to the NVIDIA NVLink connector found on the left side of the graphics card. In other words, a 95mm fan would have blocked the NVLink connector, but the smaller 85mm fan allows for just enough space to be used. Speaking of the NVLink connector, in order to use it properly, a plastic plate has to be removed from the graphics card. Luckily, this plate is only held in place by two screws. Going back to the fans for a bit, these are called Torx fans version 3, using a different impeller design that increases the static pressure and downwards airflow. These fans also have what MSI calls Zero Frozer, which is basically a feature of all the fans to be turned off when the graphics card is under light loads or until the temperature reaches 60 degrees Celsius on the graphics core. This feature should be implemented on all graphics cards from here on out, as it completely eliminates the noise generated by the fans when the graphics card is not really in use. The heatsink used on this graphics card is made out of aluminum and nickel plated copper. The aluminum part is present in the cooling fins and the various plates around the heatsink, while the six heat pipes and the base plate are made from nickel plated copper. While the graphics core makes direct contact with the base plate of this heatsink, the VRM components make contact with a secondary plate, which also has thermal conductive pads applied on it. The memory chips are being cooled by a separate metal plate that is mounted to the back plate through the PCB. These GDDR6 chips are made by Micron and are the model number D9WCW. The power delivery found on the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio is running in an 8 plus 2 phase configuration. The graphics core voltage has 8 phases and an MP2888A controller manufactured by Monolithic Power Systems. The two-phase memory VRM uses a UP9512P controller manufactured by UPI Semiconductor. Also, thanks to the increased number of RGB elements present on the graphics card, a dedicated controller is required to manage all the effects and individual behavior of each LED. This controller is an ITE8295FN56A. This controller is also used on the MSI Gaming X graphics cards, such as the RTX 2060 Super. The backplate of the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio has the same design as other Gaming X graphics cards from MSI, with a full metal construction and a linear brushed texture in two directions with plenty of cutouts that act like vents for the warm air to escape from under the backplate. The MSI and the MSI Dragon Gaming logo are also painted directly on the right part of the backplate. Under the plate, there are also some thermal conductive pads to provide some degree of passive cooling to the back of the PCB and of course the back of the VRM components. In terms of RGB, this graphics card has plenty, and I mean it. Starting from the side of the graphics card, there is a line that stretches above the side plastic plate which contains the MSI and the Dragon Gaming logo, plus the GeForce RTX emblem. All of these elements, apart from the RTX one, are illuminated by RGB LEDs. The main two fans also have some RGB integration. To be specific, the fan shroud has the RGB elements, one angular shape on the upper and lower side of each fan. The power is delivered through two 8-pin connectors found on the right corner of the graphics card. These are also placed right next to the corner of the PCB and thus making the routing of cables a bit easier, especially since this graphics card is long. The connectivity is next and this graphics card has a total of 4 display outputs. 
there are three display ports, version 1.4 and a single HDMI port, which is version 2.0B. As is the usual, above the output ports there is a cutout that serves as an additional vent for warm air to escape the heatsink. These types of cutouts on the output part of the graphics cards won't do much in terms of airflow, but they do provide a way for the hot air to be exhausted. It's not much, but it is harnessed work. As is the tradition on this channel, before we move on into the performance and testing section of the review, we have a raw sound sample of the fans spinning from 35% to 100% with a microphone standing next to the system and the graphics cards and with the rest of the fans turned off. The sound measured with the fans at their maximum speed was 38 decibels measured at 10 cm away from the system. Keep in mind that the fans will spin to their maximum speeds only when there is a high load placed on the graphics card and by that time other fans inside your system will start making noise as well. Moving on into the performance section of this review, we start our testing as always with GTA 5, which thanks to its scripted events is a reliable tool for benchmarking and comparing results. You also have to keep in mind that all values you see in the graphs are expressed in the low percentile format. This gives us a better idea of how each graphics card performs and it also takes into account the various dips into the frame rate. In our case, the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio has an average frame rate of 157 frames per second with the low 1% at 110 and the low 0.1% at 91 frames per second. The next game in our review is the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, running at 1080p just like GTA 5 and indeed all games tested. The graphics settings are set to their maximum values and Herox is disabled by default. The graphics card reached an average frame rate of 151 frames per second with the low 1% at 124 and the 0.1% at 108. This makes the gameplay experience smooth with no slowdowns even when multiple light sources were being rendered. The third game in the review is Metro Exodus, also running at 1080p with the Ultra Graphics profile selected. The game is also running in DirectX 12 mode with Vertical Sync disabled. The RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio reached an average frame rate of 112, with the low 1% at 91 frames per second and the 0.1% at 86 frames per second. The last game to be featured in our review is Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also running at 1080p with all the graphics settings turned to their maximum. Of course, it is also running in DirectX 12 mode with pure hair disabled and also vertical sync disabled. And in this game, our graphics card reached an average frame rate of 135 frames per second with the low 1% at 119 and the 0.1% at 104 frames per second. When we talk about temperature, with an ambient temperature of 26 degrees Celsius, the RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio reached a maximum temperature of 68 degrees Celsius, with a fan running using their factory profile. This makes this graphics card one of the coolest RTX 2070 Super models available on the market right now. Now. And since we are talking about the temperature, we can also include here the power consumption. This graphics card, with everything set up like it was from the factory, has a maximum power draw of 242 watts. This value was achieved in heavy gaming benchmarking and also synthetic benchmarks. The MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio is available for 515 US dollars, a whole 15 dollars more than the Founders Edition RTX 2070 Super variant. For these 15 dollars more, we get a triple fan cooling solution which does its job quite well with fans stopping when the graphics card is sitting under 60 degrees Celsius and of course plenty of RGB options. The overall performance is pretty good and it tops out our charts, being on average 10% better than the Radeon RX 5700 XT. The graphics card is silent and also looks good and will match any system configuration you can think of. This graphics card is certainly worth the price, especially if you want something that is silent and it is made using high quality components, and of course that it is on this level of performance. As always, if you like this review or the product being reviewed, perhaps you can consider subscribing for more and of course liking this video.